In this second part of the XM Cloud tutorial series, we are going into the analyze phase and in particular into the gap analysis. Since XM Cloud offers a lot of functionality out of the box, we need to understand what we can use and how we build the best way. We are going to have a look on the client designs in order to identify all the components that need to be built. At the same time, we identify the different page and partially designs that we need to configure. By doing this, we get a better understanding on what we actually need to build ourselves and where we can leverage features provided by XM Cloud. In the previous video, we got an impression on the requirements the company has and what system landscape they have at the moment. Within the four phases that we got to know, we pass the define and design phase and start with the analyze phase. At this point, it's important to understand the requirements in detail and the value behind so we can derive what the developers need to do in order to achieve the project target. Also, the content and software architecture will be important outcomes of this phase so we know how the requirements will be realized to ensure best practices and maintainability. From the requirements detailed out by the UX designers, we can derive the content architecture, meaning in what hierarchy are the pages structured. In most cases, the customer journey starts with a home page. In addition to that, they have an about section with about us, team and testimonial pages. They also have a services section with the services they offer. So with a page about web design, web development, product management, marketing and graphic design. They run a dedicated page to show their portfolio and one page showing their pricing model. To highlight their expertise, they also run a blog with constant updates. The blog consists of a blog overview page and blog detail pages. The blog is where most of the content lives. Last but not least, they have a contact page. First thing when analyzing the page layouts is to identify where we can simplify developers and marketers work using layouts, page and partial designs. Partial designs is a concept in XM Cloud where we identify common reused designs or groups of components in our site that we can pre-configure so it does not have to be done for each page. A set of partial designs can be grouped to a page design that is assigned to a certain page type or page template. The layout describes the outer part of the DOM tree that's used by the app. If you're using a copy of the foundation head from the project creation process of XM Cloud, you can find the layout.tsx file in the source folder of your repository. We will go through that process in the next video. In there you can see a head tag with title and fav icon. This part can be extended to use meta or open graph tags. The div tag wraps the body of your DOM tree containing a header, main and footer area, each with a placeholder. The placeholders can be flexibly filled with components, for example, in Sitecore Pages or Experience Editor. A common use case for partial designs is the header and the footer that is usually common across all pages. So we don't want to build that every time we design a new page. Of course, header and footer can also be implemented in the layout. The approach depends on the flexibility needed by the marketers. So do they want to be able to change the design of header and footer or is it fine that only developers can change that? One of our page designs will represent a generic page that uses the header and footer partial design but is flexible in the main content area. Another use case for page and partial designs is where designs of pages are the same. In our case, our blog posts always follow the same structure. By using a partial design, we can make the page look consistent and reduce the effort for marketers to rebuild the design each time. Other examples can be product or news pages. Let's take a closer look at header and footer. In the desktop design of the header, we can see a logo, the navigation and the social navigation. In the mobile design, we can also see the logo and the social navigation, however the main navigation is hidden behind a burger icon and appears on click. XM Cloud provides out-of-the-box components for images and navigation as well as other useful use cases that can be styled the way we need it or even adjusted in code. When talking about the navigation, there are several ways to handle it. 
When making decisions, it's important to understand the XM Cloud architecture, especially around content publishing and content delivery via Edge. In Sitecore XM or XP, pages were assembled at render time by the delivery server, meaning in the moment they were requested by the client, the pages are built on the content delivery server and the result is sent back in the response to the client. In modern headless scenarios using XM Cloud, pages are assembled at publish time. That means when an item like a page is published, the page is fully built resolving all dependencies. So when the app queries the edge endpoint, a cache response is sent back. That's why when publishing to XM Cloud, all dependencies to the published item are checked and also added to the published queue. Now these items are also checked for dependencies and added to the published queue and so on. This way we ensure that the pages delivered by Edge stay consistent and retrieving data from Edge is fast. Let's have a closer look at this example. Assuming we did changes to the About Us page content, we want to publish the page now. The publishing process is now adding the page item of the About Us page to the publish queue. Now it's identifying its dependencies and find the used components. For example, a header image component that has a data source as well as a rich text component with a data source. On the page, there's probably also a navigation component located. This one will be added to the published queue as well. Depending on how you build a navigation component, when checking the dependencies for it, the publishing process might find that the home page, the product page, and even some more page items are used to be partially displayed in the navigation with its navigation title value. So these pages would be added to the published queue as well and checked for dependencies, finding more components. So when building components, for example, the navigation component, make sure that page publish do not lead to something similar like a site publish. By knowing that we have to configure XM Cloud and architect our application and features accordingly, it is crucial to use workflows to ensure that items are only published in the version that is ready for public. When using partial designs, all dependent items are published as well when the partial design item is published. When doing wrong, any page that shows up in the navigation component is a dependency of any page using the navigation component and will be added to the published queue as well. So how can we build a navigation properly then? Understanding that Edge follows the dependency of related items and data source items using the out-of-the-box navigation component is solving that for you, as it is using a content resolver which is not considered by Edge. In case you perform a change that affects the navigation, just make sure you publish all pages or the partial design the navigation is placed on. In the desktop view of the footer, we can see four columns providing the company contact details like address, email or phone number, useful links, services, both of them are linked lists and a newsletter subscription form. Underneath, we can see the copyright, social links again that we know from the header and a button to go up to the top of the page. The mobile view of the footer is pretty much the same just stacking each column underneath each other due to the limited width of a mobile screen. Also here we can work with out-of-the-box components such as the linked list or rich text component. The newsletter subscription form can be either a custom component providing a form along with the logic to subscribe the website visitor to the according list of the email marketing tool of your choice, for example Sitecore Send, or something that your email marketing tool provides out of the box. To summarize, in order to keep maintainability from the CMS, we define the following partial designs that we can reuse on several pages, the header and the footer. The block detail page I mentioned earlier will be covered later when we talk about each single page. The next step in the analyze phase is to identify the reusable building blocks of the website. This is what we call components. You also might have heard of renderings or widgets that's the same. XM Cloud provides a no to low code component builder as well as a couple of out of the box components and the ability to build your more complex requirements. Let's find out the best ways to accomplish our goals and go through the pages one by one. Let's start with the home page design. Beside the header, the home page starts with a carousel that contains a background image and an overlay with a headline and a description text. The carousel covers the whole width of the screen. 
Next one is a text component that is divided into two columns containing a headline and a subheadline on the left and a text on the right. The third component shows a list of services that are offered by the company. Each tile contains an icon, a title text and a short text below the title. Next is the portfolio teaser displaying examples of their work. This list can be filtered on the top. Last in the content area we see the list of clients the company serves. Each client is represented with their company logo. To plan the work each page can be treated as an epic when using agile methodologies like Scrum. Each component can be a task or a user story as each new component will deliver value. Taking a look at the team or about us design, I can find the same text component and client teaser that we identified on the home page design. But the team page also introduces new components. The team teaser shows a list of team members as a card with an image, the name and the role of the team member. Above the list we see a headline stating our team and an introduction text. The second new component is the skills overview that starts also with a headline and an introduction text and then lists status bars with skills of the company. The testimonial page only contains a list of clients that are quoted as a reference here. Each tile, meaning testimonial, shows an image of the client cropped to a circle, the name and role of the client as well as the quote itself. On the services page we can find the service teaser that has been covered when discussing the home page. However, a new component listing features can be found. Beside a headline and an introduction text I can see a list of tiles that contain an icon and the feature name. On the portfolio page the same component shown on the home page can be found again. So no additional to do here as we can reuse it. On the pricing page two new components are awaiting us. On the top we have the pricing component. It shows four cards with the packages that are offered, starting with a package name, the price, a summary of the features of each package and a buy now button which links to their shop. The accordion is used for frequently asked questions. Below the headline we can see a list of questions. The sections can be expanded and collapsed on click revealing the dedicated answers. A bigger topic is the blog which consists of a blog overview page and a blog detail page. The blog overview page teases all blog posts in the order of publishing with the newest on top. As over time a lot of blog posts will be created the list is ended by a pagination functionality to save load time. In the right column of the design we can see a search box, faceting by categories and a list of recent posts as well as faceting by tags. As the blog detail page will be designed the same for each blog post, we can think of a partial design to be pre-created so a marketer does not have to set up the design of the blog detail page each time. On that partial design we will place the components required starting with a hero image, a title, some blog details that will be used as an introduction text and to teaser on the blog overview page. We need a block text component which will most probably be a rich text field so we can format the text in here. We also need to make sure that the rich text field can handle quote designs and inserting images. At the bottom there is also a commenting functionality which we need to clarify in more detail. For example if this is just embedded from a third party provider or something we need to implement. The last page we need to cover is the contact page introducing three new components. On the top we see a map that shows the office location. This will be based on Google Maps. For some countries other map providers need to be considered. Next the contact information are shown with address, email and phone details. And a contact form that can be either just custom created or solved using a third party form provider. If counted correctly in total we have 32 components with mixed complexity. XM Cloud offers several options to create those, either using the XM Cloud components, the low to no code component builder or using headless SXA. With implementing the components and partial designs a large portion of the work is done, but don't forget that the solution needs to be set up upfront and the development pipeline has to be created. 
Will you use one environment or several environments like dev, QA, staging, production? Beside your content management environment of XM Cloud, you also want to run your website on a rendering host that requires to be set up. There are also commonly required features that we did not derive from the page designs, like fav icons, error page handling, meta tags or open graph tags, redirects, sitemap XML and robots.txt. Luckily, most of these features are already implemented in XM Cloud. Also, the content needs to be migrated, as content authors don't want to redo all the content work. Enabling workflows for content is highly recommended due to the nature of how dependencies are resolved when publishing to Edge. This way you avoid that content is published that is not ready for public yet. Once everything is set up, you need to plan the go live and switch the DNSs. For sure, XM Cloud is supporting you in all of these tasks. But how much effort will this be? And how much time will the team need to implement the requirements? As the team might not yet be familiarized with the new technology stack, estimation can be hard. What you can do at this stage is to categorize the to-dos in low effort, medium effort and large effort. Also using the pattern of story points in a scrum poker can help getting a first impression of the estimation. Furthermore, the team needs to ramp up their knowledge. Watch out for resources, tutorial videos or trainings and community created content and solutions. We provide detailed information in our documentation on docs.sitecore.com. We have technical introductions available on developers.sitecore.com. There you also find the changelog for our SaaS products. We have a lot of getting started tutorials available on our Discover Sitecore YouTube channel. And of course you can register for one of our trainings on learning.sitecore.com or just check out sitecore.com. You can get in contact with the community on community.sitecore.com and check out news and announcements, events, blog posts, the community forum or check for your nearest user group to join digital and in-person events. Our community is very strong and provides a lot of content and help. Beside uncountable YouTube channels and blogs, you can reach out to the community on Slack and at Sitecore Stack Exchange. So now get ready to plan the epics and stories or tasks and stay tuned for the next episode about setting up your XM Cloud environment. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sitecore channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.